There are three main types of 3D printers, extrusion-based, resin-based, and powder-based. Within these three categories are many different types, and in this video, we are going to cover 11 different types of 3D printers. Hi, my name is Kenny Rains, and this is Rainmaker 3D. This is a part of my free course, Introduction to 3D Printing. If you haven't checked out the other videos, go take a look. And also, please subscribe so that way you can be updated for future videos. All the links for the videos are in the description below. And with all that said, let's take a look at the 11 different types of 3D printers we're going to cover today. So here's a list of the 11 different types of 3D printers that we're going to look at today. So we're going to look at FFF or FDM 3D printers, bioprinting, LMD or laser metal deposition, stereolithography, DLP, LCD, volumetric, HARP or high area rapid printing. For the powder base, we're going to look at selective laser centering and direct metal laser centering, as well as jet fusion. So I've got all of this time stamped, so that way you can go ahead and check out the chapters that you're interested in, or just go ahead and hang out and watch the whole video. So with that, let's get started on our journey with extrusion-based 3D printers, and specifically the most well-known type of 3D printing. That's right, folks. I'm talking about FDM, or Fusion Deposition Modeling, also called FFF or fused filament fabrication. I have three clips for you that show different examples of FDM printing. One is a time lapse that I have of one of my 3D printers. The next is a video from Desktop Metal. And finally, a clip showing a concrete 3D printer making a house. Enjoy. There are three steps in this process, printing, washing, and then sintering. Your print is built of two materials stored in this heated chamber above. One of a ceramic release material and one of the metal to be printed. This filament material is metal powder safely suspended within a two-part plastic binder. It gets heated and extruded onto the build plate where the part is created layer by layer. The release material gets extruded as an interface between the part and its supports so that once your part comes out of the furnace, it's easy to remove. Unlike other metal 3D printing systems, this process does not require loose metal powder, resulting in a safer and more cost-efficient workflow. 17.4 stainless steel is loaded now. However, with a quick changeover, the system is capable of printing in stainless steels, tool steels, coppers, Inconel, along with several other materials currently in development. FDM printers are the most popular printer due to their low cost, wide variety of materials and ease of use. You can get an Ender 3 or Ender 3 V2 if you really want to get started in FDM 3D printing for under $300. Next, we will take a look at bioprinting. Wake Forest has really been pushing the boundaries in this area, and in this video we will take a look at how Lulzbot is getting involved. The Lulzbot Bio is a fresh certified bioprinter ready for use with bio inks, unmodified collagen, and other soft materials for pharmaceutical and cosmetic testing, regenerative medicine, and tissue engineering. Bioprinting is 3D printing, but just with biological materials and cells. And so the idea is that with cells and these biopolymers together that we can rebuild tissue structure. We developed a way to 3D print collagen with pretty high spatial resolution. Collagen, which is the major material of the human body, has been really challenging the bioprint, and that's where the FRESH printing technology comes in. FRESH is an acronym, which stands for Freeform Reversible Embedding of Suspended Hydrogels. We actually drop a needle into a bath of support material. If you just printed it in air, it would kind of just deform, and you would never be able to create anything large. When we're done, we just raise the temperature of everything we printed from room temperature to body temperature, and it melts that support gel, and then we can pull out whatever we printed non-destructively. There's huge potential in bioprinting. It's an incredible technology. Next, we're going to take a look at laser metal deposition and check out some 3D printed rockets. That wraps up our extrusion-based printers. 
Now let's take a look at our resin-based printers. Resin-based printers have really been picking up steam in the last few years, and this has been fueled by the rise in low-cost, high-resolution LCD printers. But first, let's check out the original resin-based printer, the Laser-Based Stereolithography, or SLA, printer. We've redesigned the print engine to make a leap forward in reliability and print quality using linear illumination and a flexible tank to turn liquid resin into flawless prints. We call this low force stereolithography, an advanced form of stereolithography that balances high detail and high speed. Laser-based stereolithography printers use a laser to cure resin point by point and they have beautiful quality and resolution. They're a little bit on the expensive side. Form Labs has a great printer if you want something that's very easy to use in the Form 3 and Form 3B if you need a giant SLA 3D printer. So the next technology you'll check out is DLP or Digital Light Processing. The cool thing with DLP printers as well as LCD is they cure an entire layer at a time. So you're not penalized in time in regards to how much you have in the X and Y axis, just how tall the print is in the Z axis and your resolution is determined by your pixel size as well as the Z axis movement resolution. So that said, let's check out a few videos of how DLP technology works. DLP printers use a light projector, similar to what you would find in a movie theater, to project the image of an entire layer simultaneously, regardless of the number of parts. Because they cure a full layer in a single flash, DLP printers can be outstandingly fast. They are also very reliable with low complexity and no moving parts. SprintRay Pro is powered by a DLP projector of our own design, enabling it to 3D print models quickly and with outstanding accuracy. Projector. DLP stands for Digital Light Processing. The tray has a clear window so light flashes can cure a layer. This is the base from a printer we took apart so I can show you what's inside. Sitting on the base is the amber tray that contains the resin. Note that the silicone coated window of the tray is positioned over a window in the base. And inside, there's a bundle of electronics that contains a powerful LED, a light emitting diode. It produces blue light of a narrow range of wavelengths. Then some optics spread that beam of light and shine it onto a device called a micromere that creates the light pattern appropriate for a particular layer then a mirror reflects the layer pattern through the window in the tray and onto the resin. Remember that what we are looking at here are the layers of the swan which are printed one by one on top of each other. As we watch the layers, keep in mind the printed swan. Here, the thin red line in the yellow block on the swan indicates the cross section being printed. In the projected images, the bright blue areas are where light is reflected on the resin and cures it. The dark areas reflect no light on the resin and so it stays liquid. Notice the round circles. These are the support posts created when the swan prints. They're more easily seen here when highlighted in blue. These are later snapped off the swan. Let's speed up the printing and watch the swan being formed. All the tiny circles coming up are the support posts at the very bottom. Here, the base prints. And then the body. You can see the wings begin to take shape. These are the top of the wings. The round blue dot on the right is the swan's neck. And then the blue flashes disappear as we reach the top of the swan. Digital light processing was an incredible technology when it came out. To be able to cure layer by layer an entire X and Y axis at the same time was something that was different from FDM as well as from laser-based stereolithography printers but it's still a little bit expensive for the consumer market. So now let's look at something that really is changing the game even today, the LCD or MLCD liquid crystal display 3D printers. It's very similar technology to DLP. It's curing an entire layer at a time. You're not penalized at all in print time in regards to how much you have in the X and Y axis, only how tall the print is, but they're extremely low cost. And this has really been driven down thanks to how popular cell phones are and also how good the resolution is getting in cell phones. Today, you can get a 4K 
LCD 3D printer for under $400, which is pretty mind-blowing to think about. So that said, let's check out some videos on LCD 3D printers. LCD printers use a screen, similar to the one on your smartphone, to project the image of an entire layer at once. In this way, LCD printers are quite similar to DLP. They can even share materials. So now we're going to get into two really groundbreaking, revolutionary styles of 3D printing that are still on their early phases, but totally think that they're worth including in this video. First one of those is volumetric 3D printing. So this is completely different than any other type of 3D printing we've talked about so far. And basically, the entire model is made at the same time by rotating uh, the liquid, and you're projecting the light, and it's pretty hard to explain so let's just take a look at some videos that talk about volumetric 3d printing When they crack the code on scale for volumetric 3D printing, that really is going to be close to the replicator off Star Trek. But now let's take a look at something that already can do big prints. It's just very uh, young in its progression in technology, and that's high area rapid printing, or HARP. It basically is like LCD 3D printers, but it instead of being on a piece of FEP film, it's actually the resin floats on a fluorinated oil and uh, there's no peel force so you can scale and, and peel force is basically the print has to pull off of this FEP film and it and it just limits how big you can go uh, with a st typical stereolithography printer so let's take a look at HARP this specialized 3D printer just received a record-breaking throughput for modern 3D printing it can create structures the size of a human adult in just a few hours that's printing about seven millimeters per minute. We have a liquid, think of it as liquid Teflon, that basically flows over the glass window that the light is shining through to generate the part. Mm -hmm. That nonstick liquid is keeping the part from adhering to the window, allowing you to continuously print, which gives you speed, and it is removing the heat as it's generated. So we're almost unlimited in terms of size in, in principle. If you want to hear and see more on volumetric 3D printing as well as HARP, go ahead and check out my video, The Future of 3D Printing. So now we get to our last group of technology and that is powder-based 3D printers. And we'll start out with selective laser centering. So a really big advantage for the powder-based systems is that they are their own supports. The powder that you're not fusing together holds up the part as it's being printed. And so the way that selective laser centering works is there's a laser that fuses powders together, such as nylon or some other type of powder. You can use metals and, and essentially anything that can be made into a powder form and fused together with a high energy laser. They're a little bit expensive and typically out of the hobbyist range, but at the same time, you can outsource and go to a company like uh, 3D Hubs or uh, some other companies to be able to get something SLS 3D printed if you can't afford the printer. Uh, or you could just buy one if you have a business or you have a specific need that you really need it. So with that said, let's check out some videos to see how SLS 3D printing works. Once the nylon powder is loaded in the supply container and digital instructions are programmed, the laser unit directs a high-powered beam to a reflective mirror. From there, a Galvo motor system steers the focused beam to the powder surface. Each layer of part geometry is then sintered into a heated bed of nylon. Pistons move the supply container up and the build chamber down, while a roller moves across the bed to distribute the next layer of powder. Excess powder is captured in a collection container. The process is repeated layer by layer until the build is complete. Right below the melting point of the material. 
then you're using some energy source, whether it be a, a diode laser, fiber laser, CO2 laser, um, some level of energy to take it past that glass transition point. So it takes it past that glass or liquid transition point and then solidifies. So you're selectively solidifying that material onto the bed. And then you're laying another layer of powder on top of it. Generally, it's in that 0.1 millimeter uh, layer thicknesses. So you're just uh, additively putting that next layer on. Our next form of powder-based 3D printing is extremely similar to selective laser centering, and it's called direct metal laser centering. So it uses essentially the same technology, but you're specifically focused on being able to print metals such as stainless steel, titanium, aluminum, inconel, and cobalt chrome. And there are some other materials that you can print, but these are the main ones. So let's check out some videos on direct metal laser centering. Direct metal laser centering, also known as DMLS, is an additive manufacturing technology that creates metal parts directly from 3D CAD data without the need for tooling. DMLS utilizes a variety of metal and alloy materials, such as stainless steel, cobalt chrome, and inconel, to create strong, durable parts and prototypes. DMLS is an excellent choice for functional metal prototypes, high temperature applications, and end-use parts. So we're finally at our last type of 3D printer we're going to talk about, which is jet fusion. So basically this binds a powder together with ink and an activator. What's really cool with this technology is you're able to 3D print out uh, individual voxels. That's a 3D pixel. So think X, Y, Z, and you can color it and you can see the picture of the 3D printed heart with all sorts of different colors. So really cool technology for being able to represent something in full color. Uh, and I've also heard of people 3D printing prosthetics. I've got a video on that in our applications of 3D printing. And so uh, this jet fusion technology is really interesting. Let's check out a video of it. Meet HP's most compact 3D printing devices, designed for convenient in-house automated prototyping and production. With the HP Jet Fusion 500-300 series 3D printers, Accelerate your creation workflow by producing functional parts in full color or white with voxel control in a fraction of the time. At any point during the printing process, you can monitor job status in the HP SmartStream 3D Command Center. When printing is complete, ambient air cooling ensures part integrity. Automated vibration and airflow then extract unused material from within the build chamber, and unused material is reclaimed inside the printer for future builds. During this process, material is completely contained within the unit for a cleaner, more efficient operation. After cooling and material reclamation, your parts are ready for retrieval and post-processing in a bead and air blast cabinet. Any final finishes can be applied. Get the parts you want when you need them, easily, reliably, and predictably, with immediate access to support and comprehensive, affordable training. Stay ahead and produce brilliant full color and white functional parts with HP Jet Fusion 500-300 Series 3D printers. Color outside the lines of convention and bring your ideas to life. So that's it. That wraps up our video on the 11 different types of 3D printers. And so I'm curious, go ahead and let us know what your favorite type of 3D printer is in the comments below. 
And thank you for watching. Be sure to check out our other videos and introduction to 3D printing. And uh, we'll leave some links at the end of this video. Thanks. Hi, this is Kenny Rains with Rainmaker 3D. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to press the like button if you learned anything or enjoyed the video. And also smash that subscribe button for more tips, tricks, tutorials, and time lapses.